Who remembers that word? Me. What's your word? Challenge. Have you seen challenges? Have you faced challenges here? Did you get past them? Yes. Did you conquer them? Yes. Awesome. What's yours? Scintillating. Are you that shining star yet? Not yet, but soon. But soon. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else remember their word? What's yours? Discipline. 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 How are you doing with discipline? Yeah. What that? This should be a All right. remembers their word. What's your word? Completion. I'm almost afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going? Better. I step closer every time. What, by the month? Yeah. <laughs> or are we still counting years? Month. I'd like to see you count days. Days. Maybe hours. That would be better. I would think. Been here too long. Who else? What's yours? I forgot. I've been helping everyone, but I forgot my word. <laughs> yeah, actually, but I know his word. I forgot my word. <laughs> What's this? Enable. Enable, yeah. Oh, you remember his, but you can't remember his. <laughs> we have a game we play here. I gave them all words. They had to live the example of the word and help the rest of the students live the example of the word. Some of them are doing good. Completion's <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, let me see. Who else is here? What's yours? Consistency. Oh, yeah? How are you doing with that? Are you consistent? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Smile. Nah, I'm lazy. No, I don't think so. Just like. Oh, yeah. Nope. Okay. It's good, by the way. Shalane, how are you doing? Mm, it was benefactoring. Yeah. It's okay. Okay, yeah. Huh? Anybody else have any words to say for Shalane? Yeah, actually he's perfect for that word, you know. He's what? He's really perfect for that word. Whenever I ask the questions, he just explains me. Even he has words. Stop asking about restaurants. <laughs> Did I ask about restaurants only? No. Look at him. Okay. Look at him. <laughs> What's your word, Rohan? Vacation. Vacation. <laughs> Dedication. 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 Yeah. How are you doing with that? Good. How far along are you? Oh wait, you're a private pilot now. Private pilot. I guess that deter shows determination and dedication. How long before you uh, are going to be ready for your instrument? I'll be done in a month or two. Let's pin it down. Let's put some time on. Let's put some pressure on you. Okay. Um, Month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Still sounds like a compromise, but we'll take it. Month and a half. Now say 45 days. Yeah, 45 days. <laughs> yeah. 45 days. Stish, how's you doing? What's your word? How are you making it? I'm facing difficulties every day. Yeah? You getting past them? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, everybody else is missing, so. All right, good. We still remember our words. 
What did we talk about last time? Fear. Overcome the fear. Overcoming your fear. Mm -hmm. Who remembers the discussion? Identify the problem, think what you can do with that problem, what you want to solve or don't want to solve, go forward with that, find out the results, proceed. Good. That's pretty much it. Right on target. Why didn't you think of that? I did. Why didn't you say something? Why are you waiting for him to say that? Someone need to speak up. Yeah, like you? I will miss you as well. Two times back, what were our topics? Does anybody remember? That those of you who were here, there was four points to the discussion. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Overcome the fear. Overcome, Overcome the fear. fear. What? About overcome the fear. Overcome fear. About the excuses. Say what? Excuses. What? Excuses. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> excuses. Make oh. Make excuses. Take no excuses. <laughs> Take no excuses. <laughs> excuses. All right. Okay, that was good. Now, I'm going to talk today about um, preparedness and situation awareness. Okay, what's that mean? What's that mean, Rohan? Don't look at me like a deer in the headlights. What's that mean? Preparedness means you should be prepared for anything that could happen in the future. Okay. And situation and awareness is you should be aware of what's happening around you. When? In the, in the flight, anywhere. Just yeah. When you're doing something crucial. All the time, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> what's your opinion on that? Me? It's such more awareness. <clears throat> yeah, you should always be aware of your surroundings at all times. Um, you're not gonna, for instance, um, when I first came here, I was looking, I was looking all around getting comfortable with the place, you know, I'm not gonna try and get myself in a bad spot that I can't get out of, so, yeah, I'm always aware of my surroundings. That's big in team building, being aware of the people around you and putting your trust into other people that they have your back as well, so. It's big in what? Team building. Would you repeat that? Team building. Maybe louder. Team building. Thank you. <laughs> so. We, we struggle with that word. Team? Team. Here. You guys are a team here. You guys should all be putting, you know, that the person to your left and to the right that you could trust that if you were calling it, you run back up. That's something that I'm big on. Just I'm not off my key. A lot. Take it for the time for instance. For instance. You know, you're going to be on the shyness and the uh, everything, or not speaking up when a question's getting asked, you know, you're, you're gonna be a first officer or on the captain's side. Something goes wrong for the first time ever. Are you gonna wait for your captain to speak up or are you gonna speak up and say something right away if you know the issue at hand? If I mean, that's something I try and put forth in my training is, you know, be aware of everything, know if, let's say we, we have an engine failure right now, where, where are my options at? So that's the topic, that's back at it, that's sexual awareness and being able to trust that the person you're flying with will have your back too in case you come into a situation that you just don't know how to handle yet. So that was longer than I meant to go with that one. That's all right, it's perfectly good. That was fantastic. Um, we're, we're discussing this today because in the past, in the very recent past, there's been, well, there's always an air, air small airplane going in someplace. Um, 
but some just passed when there was one that was close to one of our fellows in the room. And it was a wake-up call. You guys take a lot of stuff for granted out here. I'm serious. You take a lot of stuff for granted. You assume that airplane's in perfect condition. You guys do pre-flights, and I know there's things on that airplane you should find, and you don't come and tell me. How long did 611 fly without a panel? Six months. More than that. It's a whole year. Six months. Whole year. Nobody came and told me. No panel on the airplane. I knew it was missing. But you didn't tell me. Something is seriously wrong with an airplane and you don't say anything. I'm not in it. I just fix it. You're the one that's in it. So you guys take a lot for granted. You assume everything is going to be just peachy and roses. But What's going uh, oh, Go ahead. Have you guys actually ever been in a plane where you actually had an emergency happen? I'm just curious. I have. Um, I actually did. I had an engine failure right after takeoff. And then I had a partial power loss in the, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but it's the old 72 RGs. <laughs> Scary planes. Uh, we had partial power loss, so, you know, back on that, you, I, we identified the problem. I don't remember what, when that was. So our solution was, because well, let's head back to the airport because we're 20 miles away from it, from the practice area. So we, you know, we took cornfield routes, we took roads, service roads, all the way back, just so if we have an option on the way out. But yeah, um, pre-flights are, are big. You guys should really be looking at every crack and nook in that plane because I don't know how a panel goes missing. That's kind of scary. Well, it did. It was missing when I got here. Yeah. So, yeah, don't take it for granted. Emergencies happen. And, you know, when you find yourself in one, it's... When you don't just train emergencies because it's part of the check rank. Train because you're doing it because it could yeah. happen to you one day. Life. And you don't want to be, like, in that oh crap moment. I don't know what to do. And you freeze up. So, yeah. Really train emergencies as it's an actual thing because... You know, I w admit when it was my first emergency with the partial power loss, and not partial power loss, the uh, engine failure. You know, um, I, I was lucky for me that it was in the 52, and we were able to place it right back onto the ground, but uh, right back on the runway. But you know, what if it happened 800 feet above the runway? You know, just be prepared with those emergencies. Don't take it for granted that your plane will fly perfectly every time because weird stuff happens yeah not when you expect it mm -hmm. Clear to land, Mike. We got 
able to get the uh, option? No, it's uh, going to have to be a full stop. Okay, thanks, man. Is that Cherokee that just left? Correct. Go, Mike, on down to an hour three point. Space Tower, Skyhawk 15222, ready for takeoff, runway 13. I got two, uh, if you can actually use on my 13 to taxi back, you know, we're going to have to shut down the operations here for a little bit. I will use that 13 to taxi back, uh, 15222. 5222, roger, uh, down uh, 13, and then, uh, then uh, I'll return on Alpha 3 Delta 2. 3 Delta 2 to bearing on uh, 15222, any idea what's going to get open back up? Sorry, thank you. I do, we need to get over things back up. Uh, we just gotta kinda of make sure to see what's going on. I was having to have my own as well. Two call five clear out clear, we're gonna attack you later. Correct. Short of one three, ready for departure. We're not kick off mic, uh, runway one three, echo two intersection. Clear for takeoff and left turns approval. The verbiage says, Mr. Abs started on June 13, 2007. He and Craig, lead pilot, were invited to the Fort Myer Flying Club to speak about EM, how EMS systems work on the airplane. He stated they were sitting, waiting to speak, and a conversation came up about the problems on November 199 Pop Alpha. He stated several pilots were discussing water issues in the fuel tanks, and a mechanic spoke about how he fixed the problem. I'd like to know how he did it. Other pilots stated they thought the plane had more issues than water, as they had aborted takeoffs in the past with this airplane for loss of power. He further stated the conversation was heated at times, and people were upset with the airplane and its performance. The whole conversation took place on this airplane, and there was problems. You got problems out here, you don't fly. At all. You come and get me. You come and get your instructor. If you find anything on this airplane that's questionable, you have to bring it to my attention. Because a lot of times I just don't know. I don't pre-flight the airplanes daily. You do. You guys have to find the issues and bring them up to me. That means you have to be very observant. That means you have to be awake, Jay. Me? Yeah, yeah. and Fennell. Eyes open, alert, have ample sleep. Make sure you get nutrition. Find the problems and bring them to my attention. I can't fix them if I don't know about them. And the end result was people died. I'm not trying to scare you, but I want you to understand, you guys take a lot of stuff for granted. You assume it's all going to work perfectly. It's a machine. It's subject to mechanical failure. Practice a good pre-flight. If you have to lay on your back on the ground and go underneath the airplane, do it. Practice a good pre-flight. All right? Shalene wants to share with us a few things. Good. Good. About to show you is one of my close friends. So he passed away um, just the day before yesterday. And he was an Embry-Riddle student. It was the same thing. Uh, like last month, I think there was a crash just like this, but there was 
the wing fell out. So then I think it was an ins uh, a DE and a student that died. But this one, this instructor and the student, who was my friend, uh, he passed away. And so it was a crash. Well, this was the. Uh, this is what the flight. Crash last night. And another flight instructor was critically hurt. Nuisance 4 challenge Laura Seabrook spoke with men who witnessed this crash at the Spruce Creek Fly-In in Volusia County last night. Lauren joins us live. Lauren, he actually saw the plane take off and immediately noticed it was having problems. And Greg, you can only imagine how terrible those next few moments were for him. He told us he heard and saw that plane's only engine sputter twice and then go completely dead. He says the crash that happened just behind the tree line here was horrific. Still 911, where's your emergency? I thought Bruce Creek airplane just crashed. Um, I'm sorry, wait, hold on, hold on. Take a deep breath. Where are you at Spruce Creek? A man who lives across the street from the runway watched this 1946 single-engine Cessna 140 go down with two young men inside. And this was the outcome. He says about 200 feet off the ground, the plane sputtered for a second, the engine came back, then it sputtered again and went out completely. That's when he says the pilot took an aggressive left turn and crashed into a large tree. Another man called 911. Um, it took off a few approach, yeah. The man who witnessed the crash says two others helped him pull the passenger out. He says 22-year-old Nandish Patel, a senior at Embry-Riddle, had vital signs briefly, but died at the scene. Is it possible that the person in the plane survived? Yes. Emergency crews used the jaws of life to extract yeah. the pilot chased oh, no. in. The 23-year-old graduated last year and is now a flight instructor at Embry-Riddle. He remains in critical condition. Investigators will now look at the weather conditions from last night to see if it caused a problem for Zinn while taking off. They will also look at his past and experience as part of the investigation. And the plane that crashed last month was owned by the university, but the plane that crashed here last night was owned by the pilot's family. We also just found out that Embry-Riddle will be holding a vigil for the passenger tonight at the university at 8 o'clock. Reporting live in Port Orange, Lawrence Super Channel 9, Eyewitness News. So I want you guys to speak that. Um, they didn't really go into... What's the news? It's, um, I don't know how much time they really don't know what they're talking about with the aviation side. They don't know what they're talking about about aviation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's drama. What's the photo? Oh, sorry. I want to question the choice to make a hard, hard left, hard left, left turn right after you take off at 200 feet. Because mm -hmm. there's no way you're getting back to the runway. I don't know if it's because maybe there's, like they said, that empty lot right next. Because mm -hmm. that's what. Because they did, it, it did say they were. Maybe uh, trying to avoid how that's the thing. Like, that, like, right. And then they hit a tree and, um, and yeah. trying to get to the lot. So. It's, you know, to make a lesson back on that situational awareness, <laughs> right. if you know your airport, your AFD, flying at night, if you have that engine failure, you know what exactly is at the end of that runway and which way to turn in case you do have that engine failure. So. That's I, that's my only question. That's why I was like shocked when I heard they made a, an aggressive left turn with the mm -hmm. flight instructor. And stuff. Right. I don't know if it was student instinct and the flight instructor didn't have enough time to react react with right. it or what. So let me we will get more details on it. There's an investigation. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. So that really gave me a reality check. So I just made up a couple things that I want everyone else to do if you want to follow it. If not, yeah. But I just want to put this out so I don't want to lose another friend. You guys understand? Okay. So first thing, do a passive review. Um. So you're gonna start a uh, engine start. So before your engine start, you can get a fire yourself. So. First things first, you want to do a passenger brief on that okay, with your instructor. If if you say anything wrong, um, ask your instructor to correct you, so you don't get fired. Um, 
Next thing, your taxi brief, <coughs> so you don't get any collisions. Any <coughs> so you want to brief the taxi exactly what exactly what tower told you. You've got to follow that. <coughs> and then there's pre takeoff. So that's what I want to get into details about. So pre takeoff. Maybe on this in this crash, maybe they didn't do a pre takeoff. Maybe because then once you do it, the pre takeoff. Once you do that, you verbalize it. When you verbalize it, you're putting it in your mouth. Now it's concrete. It's there. Okay? So that reason is there. If you get that failure, you're going to do this. That's why you're saying that. It's not just to say it. It's because you're going to do it. And the next thing I want to say, memorize the checklist. Especially the emergency sides of things. Um, like, just let's go back to the passenger uh, like pre-ignition so just when you're starting the engine if you have a fire let's say you start the engine you have a fire what's the first thing you're gonna do switch 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 check the checklist so you start the engine you get a fire you don't yeah. switch out the engine no look at the checklist it says you increase power, you increase power. why yeah. oh feeding the air to the fire See, that's why it's important. Um, the pre tack pre takeoff uh, checklist. I learned that from Fennel actually when we were time with it. I didn't I didn't do that at all during private. So I should have been doing that. Even with my instructor. <coughs> he told me a couple of times to do it. But then, you know, I brushed it off. But this is reality check. Pre takeoff checklist you're referring to the bag check. No, 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 sorry. I'm, I'm not like pre takeoff brief. So oh, gotcha. Yeah. Briefs, okay. So, all of these briefs, I, I really feel you should, every single time you turn on that engine, you should do them. Even if you turn off the engine and you're about to start it again, do that. So, you verbalize it. So, it's cement, it's concrete. Right? Okay. Next thing is. Um, be an active pilot, just like if we were saying, situational awareness. Um, always be in the cockpit. Your head has to be there. If it's not there, what are you? Same thing. That's that's exactly what happened in my multi engine check pad. My head wasn't in there. So during my uh, single engine traffic pattern, this is what I did. You're only supposed to turn 20 degrees into the operative engine. Only 20, no more than that. I was doing 40 degrees. That's me asking for death or killing all the passengers in the near future, right? So I'm glad I feel that. And I live with that. And I say, it's better to fail than die. You know? That's how serious it is. So I really hope you guys take this seriously and do these briefs, you know, be better pilots. I don't want to lose another friend. Or lose myself, you know. Thanks, guys. That was a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah, unfortunately, it's um, blood priority when it comes to flying before something changes. Usually, someone has to die for the FAA to put in a policy. Right. Sad part about things. You just don't be on that end of being the reason why that policy got it. So, yeah, I mean, everyone needs a reality check one day, just, you know, pi pilots are complacent, they get lazy. Um, people start brushing off checklists, like, okay, yeah, I know my cruise checklist is four items. Just read the checklist. I mean, I've forgotten, I did that through my training at some points, I would just say, okay, cruise checklist done, you know, <clears throat> power is adjusted and whatever, lean. And, you know, I'd come back in and start doing my descent, and I'd notice my landing light is still on. And I'm like, your know, landing light comes off during cruise, right? So either do the, do the items that you think is on the checklist, and then check the checklist, or read the checklist, and then do the items. Don't just get complacent, because that's what causes accidents, complacency. So, yeah. Wow. Complacency kills. Hmm. <coughs> Robin gave me an article. It, it goes on, it begins with good pilots use 
a good pilot uses good judgment to avoid situations that require the use of superior piloting skills. Good judgment will keep you out of trouble. How sincere are you about being a better pilot? The following are some attributes that make a better pilot. Don't be drunk. That's kind of important. Be responsible. Hmm. That's kind of important. Be reliable. Hey, you tell Bob you're going to be here at 9 o'clock. Guess what time you should be at my door? 2.50. Yeah, 2. <laughs> be dependable. Kind of goes with reliable. Have self-control. The phone doesn't need to be in your pocket. You don't need earbuds. Work at being healthy. What's being healthy? And it's be disciplined physically and mentally. What's work at being healthy? What's good health? Come on. Come on. I'm not speaking to Martians. You understand my language. Mm -hmm. What's good health? Good food. Good food? Yeah. Good mindset. Good mindset? What else? Physical fitness? That's yeah, physical fitness can play a very big part. But what else? Drink water. Drink water. Stay positive. Stay positive. Smile. Breathe. How about sleep? Did anybody say sleep in there? Yeah. Yeah. No, but not sleep. Ample sleep. And you sleep always? Minimum. Six. Eight. 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 B. Cooperative. That means being a team player. You guys are a team. Don't crash. That messes up the paint, bends my propellers, I get pissed off. <laughs> command respect from your peers. From, command respect from peers mentored. You senior guys should be awake. Yeah, I'm looking at you. You should be setting the example and mentoring the junior people. Have good eyesight. Be situationally aware. Let me say that slowly in English. <laughs> Be situationally aware. <laughs> Did you hear me? Be able to read well. That's paper. Paper draws. Paper. <laughs> paper. <laughs> Have good kidney control. I don't know why that's in there, but you can't really get up and go to the bathroom when you're... Okay. <laughs> if that means for Jirazi, you'll have to have the pens. What? Don't wear sunglasses just to be cool. Be sober. Have integrity. What's integrity? What is integrity? Anybody care to volunteer something here? Do you know what integrity is? Yeah, it's integrity. Not integrate. <laughs> You're going to get integrated. <laughs> You're going to have red wings stamped on your buttocks. <laughs> In integrity. Teamwork. Are you kidding me? All right, which one of you guys illegally brought a phone? Come on, Jiraz, pull it out. <laughs> Look up integrity. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you had it. Why didn't you just pull it out? <laughs> you said not to be. Not You're not supposed to have it in a room. Uh, but, you know. I know how parasites are. They get a hold of you and you won't let go. 
What's integrity? I'm waiting. <laughs> Right, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. Integrity. Mm -hmm. That's the same. It goes along with being reliable and punctual. Be realistic. Be trusting. But verify. Be practical. Be presentable. You guys are professionals. Your shirt should be pressed. You should have a tie. It should be tucked in. You should have black shoes on that are polished. With black socks, by the way. That's proper professional attire. Be respectful. Not easily shaken. Control your emotions. Calm, cool, collected. Good communicator. A good listener. Be moral. Increase knowledge. You're here to increase knowledge. In between your naps and your YouTube and all the other distractions you have. Ah, recognize, evaluate, and calculate. You should not make off-the-cuff decisions. Recognize, evaluate, and calculate. Be focused. Analyze. Command. Be informed. Be a deviator. Self-evaluate. Be trained. Continue learning. mechanical aptitude. I give you guys the opportunity to do that, but you blow it. Be considerate others and treat the mechanic well. That's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so th these are all real cool things, but when you interview for an airline, they're going to give you a an aptitude test, and then they're going to give you a psychological profile test. And those tests are amazing. It's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. Do you know what that means? You know, wheat from the chaff, what's chaff? What is it? What's wheat? You don't know what wheat is? Does anybody in this room know what wheat is? Mm -hmm. Speak it. What is it? Grain. It's a grain. <laughs> What's chaff? Chaff is chaff is the uh, structure. I mean, like when we like rough it or like try to clean that, the waste that comes. That's the waste. Yeah. The stuff you throw away. Those tests will separate the people that are going to get thrown away, and they're amazingly accurate. They're going to look for those characteristics. Reliable punctual, considerate. They'll pick them out of the crowd. Everybody else gets canned. If you don't start practicing it here, you won't practice it out there. You tell me you're going to be here at 9 o'clock, you better be at my door before 9 o'clock. Two in the afternoon, just don't cut it. Even if somebody else is driving, be on time, be punctual, be reliable. You guys are leaving here to go into a very prestigious career. And we've had this discussion many times. Act and conduct yourself like a professional. All right? 
Do you guys understand me? What do you think? What's your opinion? Professionalism? Um, well, if I were at the airline world, yeah, I'm, so I, I'm with a region, I'm with Republic Airlines. I've already interviewed with them, um, and he's not wrong, you know, HR comes out there, and they start, pilot comes with the interview as well, and they start throwing questions at you left and right, and it's to make sure that, you know, because at the airlines you're doing four-day trips with each other, they want to make sure that they can fly with you, you're safe, you're nice, and you're not someone known in the industry as a slam click where you just get to, you do your routes, get to the hotel, close the door, and never communicate with anyone again. So, personality is big in professionalism as well. Pilots, you want an outgoing personality, not to the point where it's, you know, you're trying to talk to them 24-7, you get to the point, it's like, okay, leave me alone, but don't be an introvert. Try, if you're an introvert already, uh, does anyone know what introvert means? Put yourself out there, start talking. I used to be, you know, shy in high school and then college I kind of opened up and started talking. So, per personality is my big thing, professionalism, yeah, and dress, like Bob was saying, dress the way you should, should for the job. Don't come in on, um, don't come in with basketball shorts or anything, because then I'm going to, people judge all the time, and if you get that first impression, that's what matters, that's what you guys have probably all experienced yourself. You see someone who's not dressed for the part, and you're like, oh, okay. So, yeah, professional is big, sets you apart. They're already set apart very, very, very small percentage of the population of the world ever has the opportunity to do. So you're already setting yourself apart. Just conduct yourself in an appropriate manner. All right, guys and gals. Well, this was a heck of a lot of fun. So I'm going to let you all go now until next time at Tidy Dave Productions. <laughs>